Hello everyone, my name is Malcolm Eastman, and today we are going to be learning how to create secure shell connections on Cisco's packet, Cisco's packet tracer for a Cisco switch and a Cisco router. So the first thing we want to understand is why do we want to use secure shell? So secure shell is a protocol that essentially encrypts packets as they traverse a network. Because when we're talking about encryption, we're generally talking about data in transit. And then when we're talking about hashing, we're talking about data that is at rest or in storage. And why do we want to encrypt our data in transit? The reason that we want to encrypt our data in transit is because it, it, it enables us to basically defend ourselves against an attack such as a man-in-the-middle attack, where a man-in-the-middle attack is where somebody basically can sit in between two different endpoints. So a PC to PC or a PC to a router and basically intercept messages that are going in between those two points. Secure Shell encrypts those packets, right? So if we're using Wireshark and we're trying to analyze a connection, if, if it's Secure Shell, we'll be able to um, encrypt those packets and the person who's trying to intercept those packets using something like a uh, Wireshark won't be able to see the path, what's what's um what's the data that's being communicated between the two points, right? On the flip side of that, you have Telnet. Telnet is another way that we can remotely connect into different endpoints, right? Servers, routers, switches, but it's it, it displays the data in clear text. And the problem with that, obviously, if it's being displayed in clear text, pretty much anybody who intercepts these packets can read it. And we really don't want that because when we're communicating to a switch, such as this one right here, we're putting in different configurations. We could be troubleshooting. You know, we could be saving configurations and making changes. And basically anybody who's sitting in the middle listening can see everything we're doing in passwords, usernames, that to the or whether we're, we have port security enabled on our switch, you know, basically you can just see anything, right? The IP addresses of these different um, endpoints that are connected to our switch, right? So we're gonna create a secure shell connection on our switch here, as well as our router. And the goal of this is basically, so we have PC one over here, and PC one is gonna be able to communicate with switch one and router one, right? So the first thing I want to do is I want to act like this is an initial configuration, right? I just got these two new um, the network devices straight out the box, right? My switch one and switch and router one, and I want to do an initial configuration. So when we have our new network devices, we're going to use our console connection. And that's going to be this blue wire here. And I want to actually just show you guys two different versions of the what we, a console connection, right? Console cable. So this is one you, that's gonna you're gonna see that's more recent. This is a console cable that uses a USB cable, and it has an RJ45 at the end. That's what we're gonna use to connect into our switch. And then over here we have this is something that is uh, I guess you would say a legacy device or a legacy um, cable because it has a DB9 or RS. 232 uh, connection on the side right here that also has a RJ45, right? So let's go back to Packet Tracer. So I'm gonna connect my console connection to our RS232 port, and then I'm gonna connect it into the console port of the switch, right? So generally what some IT teams do, they'll keep a laptop that has that type, that has an RS, uh, 232 port on the side, and literally this co this computer is literally just for the initial configuration of switches and routers, right? It's not connecting to the internet. It's not because generally, obviously, those type of devices. Because I'm pretty sure I don't I haven't seen any recent laptops coming out with RS 232 ports. It's, I don't think they. That's I'm, I'm pretty sure that's um uh, obsolete in terms of new laptops. So basically, they'll keep an old laptop that has an RS-32 port on it so that they can configure these switches and routers. And again, this computer does not connect to the internet, so we really don't have to worry about patching it or anything like that because it's literally, we turn it on, we just use PuTTY, right, our terminal emulator, right, to connect into these switches, right? So 
I'm going to go to our terminal right here. And again, if you're familiar with Putty, basically, this is not, not Putty, but basically we would use uh, Putty to get it to connect into, to use our console connection to connect into the switch, right? So I'd click OK. And then again, I'm now in the switch, right? So the first thing that I want to do, I, again, this is an initial configuration. So the first thing that I'm going to do is we're going to get into the configuration terminal. And then we're going to change the name, right? We're going to do the host name, and this is going to be switch one. And then I want to put passwords on here. So I want to do, I'm going to do an enable password. And this I'm going to call, and this password is going to be Cisco, right? Well, we're going to do lowercase for this one, right? And then we're going to do an enable secret password. And this one's going to be all capital CCNA, right? So enable password, again, is not encrypted. And our, our enable secret password is encrypted, right? So I want to just, again, encrypt the, and I, I, I kind of also want to show what the enable password looks like. So do show run and to see right here how our enable passwords in plain text and our secret passwords encrypted. So again, this is a good, good pretty good representation of the difference between Telnet and Secure Shell. So in Telnet, this is how we would see our packets, right? In clear text. In Secure Shell, we would see our packets encrypted, right? So the other thing I want to do, I do want to encrypt this enable password really quickly. So that's going to be service, password, encryption. And then I hit enter, and then I go back to the command. And then again, now the enable password is also encrypted, OK? So now that we've gotten through that, now that I've done the password, I'm in the console line, right? And I want to configure the console one. All right, so I'm going to do line console zero. And the reason it's zero, there's only one console line. Right? So I hit enter. And now I'm in the console line configuration. And one of the first things I want to do, I want to do local, well, I'm sorry, login local. And what login local does, login local basically, it, we're going to use lo local login credentials to get into our um, console line, right? Next thing I want to do is exact timeout. And that's basically just for timeout. And again, this is, and again, um, in one of my previous videos, I discussed how to see the top, the number. What does the number represent? Is it minutes, right? So if I want to find out what, what it, uh, if it's, if the unit is minutes, I would hit the um, question mark and it'll show timeout in minutes, right? So I want to do five, five minutes, All right? Just five for that. And then I'm going to hit exit, right? Now, you might be asking yourself, how do you configure uh, usernames and, and local login for the switch? We're going to use the command username. And I'm going to use my name. And I'm also going to configure a password, right? And this password, I'm just going to also do all caps CCNA. Again, just for the demonstration, obviously, you would never want to have your password for the username, for your username to be the same as the secret password, but this is just for demonstration purposes, right? The other thing I want to do now also is I want to make sure that my switch knows where it knows its default gateway. So I'm going to do IP default gateway. And again, the default gateway for this demonstration is 10. Uh, 10, uh, 1. Right? Now, the next thing I also want to do is set a domain name. And that's also going to be IP domain. And I'm going to do malcolm.com just for demonstration purposes, right? Now, I want to log in and configure our virtual line, right? This is our secure shell line, right? So we're going to do line VYT 
and I'm going to do one. All right, but actually before I, I do that, I wanna show you different lines we can configure. So as you can see, there's two different lines that we can configure. We have the console line, and then we have our virtual terminal. That's, our, that's what we're gonna be using for our secure shell connection, right? So DYT, and it's gonna be one. So I wanna also use login local. I also want to use login local here because again, I want to log in with my local credentials. And then I want to do exact timeout, five minutes, right? And also let's take a look at what we can uh, configure on our line, right? So we have all these different options and you see here, we can also define the transport protocols for this line, right? And basically, I want to just take a look at that really quickly and see. So transport, and what transport protocols can we use? Let's see. So we have input. Let's go to input. And we have SSH and Telnet. So as you can see here, we have our input and output. So Again, for our input is define which protocols to use when connecting to the, to the terminal server. So again, we're going in and then output, define what protocols to use for outgoing connections. So for my input and output, I'm going to do super shell. Right, let's go back. Output, super shell. Because I want my ingoing and outgoing connection just to be for super shell because I want that encrypted. I want that encryption. I'm going to hit exit, I'm out of the line. Now there's one more thing I need to do for this. Well, two more things. I need to do crypto key generate R S A, right? And we want to do this for our encryption. So I'm gonna do two for 2048, right? Now it's generating the bits and then I'm gonna hit enter again. And as you can see right here, secure shell has been enabled, right? Now, you may be thinking to yourself, this is a switch. We have a layer two switch, right? How am I going to secure shell into a layer two switch, right? For a router, it's a little bit different, and we're going to get to that. But for a switch, what I would need to do, I need to create an interface VLAN. Now, with this interface VLAN, I can attach an IP address. So I'm going to do IP add, and this IP address is going to be 10.10.4, .10 and then 255 .255 .255 .0. I'm going to hit enter. Right, but I'm not done. With interface VLANs, they're very similar to router interfaces. You have to turn them on. And the command for that is going to be no shut. And as you can see, the line protocol is now on. Okay. So now I have done, I'm pretty much done with our switch, right? Let's go over really quickly what we've done. We configured our console line, right? Put our local login credentials, create a username, and we've also created and configured our virtual line, right? For our secure for our secure secure shell connection, excuse me. And we've also created our interface VLAN. This VLAN is going to be used for our management, right? We create this interface VLAN on our switch to log in and, and do troubleshooting as well as configurations, right? Because again, we don't always want to have to plug into our, go up to our network rack on the ladder or wherever you have it, plug in that connection with, uh, with our console connection. We want to make sure we have our solution, all right? So let's uh, exit out of here, right? And now we're going to move on to our router. So I'm going to unplug from the switch. I'm going to grab my cable again, plug it right back into our DD9. Then we're going to plug into our router. We're going to go back in. Again, we're going into our terminal emulator. We can use PuTTY, we're opening it up, and we are now in our router. All right. So do you want to do the initial configuration dialog? We're going to hit no. 
And then we are going to go into music prep mode and then we're going to go into configuration. And here, same thing. I'm just gonna name our router, change the name. These are things you should be doing when you first get your routers and switches, name them, enable passwords, usernames. You wanna do these things along, like these are the first initial things you should be doing as well as setting up a secure shell so you don't always have to plug it in, right? So again, we've done our host name. Now we wanna do our passwords, right? Enable password. And again, just for demonstration purposes, they're gonna be the same as the switch. So the passwords are gonna be the exact same um, as they were on the switch. Obviously you would never do this in a real life situation, right? Enable secret and then all caps CCNA. Remember these passwords are case sensitive, right? And I wanna make sure that we're encrypting both passwords, right? Now, I don't have to do the IP default gateway command on a router because this is the router. This is our default gateway, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is go into our interface that's going to be a default gateway, and we're going to add our IP address. It's 10, 10, 10, not 1, black 24. And then again, remember, it's a router, so we got to turn on that interface. Right, and then we're pretty much done with that interface. Right now, we want to also configure our um, console line. Right, so we're going to do line console zero because there's only one line. Log login local exec timeout five, and that's it for the command line for the console line. We're going to hit exit. And then we're going to create, make sure we have our username configured. It's going to be the same thing Malcolm, password. Um, so it was a CCNA. And then we are now going to do make sure we do our IP domain name. Again, it was malcolm.com. Okay. Now let's head into our line, right? Our configure our, our virtual line, right? So line VYT one, login local. And then we're going to do our exact timeout, five minutes. And then we're going to hit exit. And then we're going to do crypto P generates RSA. And same thing as before, 2048. Secure shell has been enabled on both. Actually, I just forgot, didn't do one thing. Let's go back into the line. And I forgot to do our to transport protocols or transport input and output. Okay, so on our router, configured our two passwords, configured a username and password, added an IP address for our default gateway. We've also made sure we turned on the switch the, the interface configured our virtual line with our lock in local exact timeout and made sure we add our domain name. We did that both and we made sure we defined the transport protocols for the input as well as the output. We wanted both with secure shell. And we also confirmed that secure shell has been enabled. Right? So we've pretty much done everything that we need to do here. And again, I've already configured the IP address on our uh, computer here, right? So I'm gonna unplug our, I'm going to unplug our console connection. Now, I'm gonna go into our PC. So this is gonna be for Secure Shell version one. 
So I'm gonna open up my command prompt for computer one. Actually, even before I tried, well, even before I tried to secure shell into these two devices, I wanna ping both of them, right? So first I'm gonna ping my default gateway just to make sure I can, I'm communicating with both. So as you see here, uh, four pings and I get four received packages or sent and four received, right? So there was zero losses there. Now let me ping the, I would also ping the interface VLAN I have on switch one. Let's see what happens. Do I get a response to ping um, from interface VLAN one? And I do, I get a response from both, right? Just wanted to make sure I can communicate with both uh, the switch and the router. So the command for interfacing into a switch, right? So it's gonna be secure shell minus L and then my name to be the username, Malcolm. And then the IP address, right? So let's start with switch one. So we wanna interface into that management VLAN, right? That interface VLAN we created. That's the whole point of us adding an interface VLAN to the switch. Now it, it gives it's saying a password, but I never configured a password. Obviously, again, for a real world situation, you would definitely want to configure a password for your switch, right? So there was no password configured. All I had to do is hit enter, and now I'm in the switch, right? As you can see here. Now I hit enable, and it's gonna ask me for my secret password, right? And now I'm in, right? I'm in the I'm in the switch. I'm in switch one. Right? Well, let's exit. And how do I exit out of the switch when I'm in the command prompt for my computer? I hit exit again. And now the connection to our switch one has been um dis we've been disconnected. Now let's try to secure shell into our router, right? Same command, right, as before. But instead of that four, I'm going to add that one. Same thing, it asks me for a password, right? I didn't configure a password, and I'm in router one. So this is a, a pretty much a this is this is pretty much what you would want to do for your in, initial configuration for any switch or any router. This applies to Juniper. Obviously, the commands of Juniper are going to be different, but this is definitely the process you're going to use when you're configuring network devices. You wanna make sure you, in, you configure your console line, you do your password, you do your usernames, and you can set up some type of secure shell connection so that you can remote into that device instead of having to be physically in the building or physically in front of, you know, physically in the building and having to plug in that device. Because obviously when we're, once we're done with the initial configuration of the switch, that switch is going in our network rack. Some companies and some places have the network rack high up might need a ladder to access it, or they might have it in the store in a, in a locked room, right? So you'll be able to remote into that switch or router with Secure Shell, right? Again, remember, we always want to use Secure Shell when we're dealing with these network devices because we want to make sure we're encrypting ourselves and making sure we're not exposing our data and our configurations, our passwords, right? The settings we're putting on. Right, because again, we want to make sure we don't have uh, somebody who's able to eavesdrop. You know, a man in the middle of attack. They can see um, what we have configured on our switches and routers. Right. So again, this has been a secure shell. Let me uh, X out of here. This has been our a secure shell connection tutorial using Cisco's Packet Tracer. I hope you guys learned something. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me at Malcolm at MalcolmEastman.tech or you can reach out to me on LinkedIn at Malcolm Eastman. Again, my name is Malcolm Eastman. This has been a tutorial on Secure Shell. I hope you learned something and I hope you have a great day.